Gary Morgan. I'm the CEO of Splash News and Picture Agency. And I'm here at Luminance 2012. From my perspective, the future of photography is incredibly bright because whereas we may see a decline in the traditional media models, our market now is the 150 million websites out there who consume celebrity like crazy. Well, hello, I'm Gary Morgan. I'm a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I like it. Um, actually, we just, when it started off, and we were, we were named as instigators, and that, that was probably the nicest thing that had been said about me. Um, so we like to call ourselves disruptors, actually. Um, he's introduced who I am. Basically, depending on what conference I'm speaking at, I'm either the head of a disrupting content supply system that's changing the way we see entertainment, changing the way we see celebrity, or I'm the rogue king of a gang of uh, paparazzi who relentlessly hunt down celebrities wherever they are around the world. But what we do know is that this part of the entertainment media is the fastest growing segment of media today. Um, I want to show you a little video just before we get in, just to explain really what it is we do and where it goes. It's essentially paparazzi, but also event, also setups, a lot of Hollywood PR. But the fun bit is a bit we're going to concentrate on today. So can we roll the video, please? Splash is the biggest celebrity news agency in the world. With more than 2,000 photographers, reporters, and production teams working around the globe. Hey, it's Damien calling from Sydney. When it comes to celebrity, we like cover it all. You know, I've got shots of Pam Anderson. OK, these are exclusive, right, Alex? Absolutely exclusive. There's nobody else out here. Splash has been making headlines around the world for more than 20 years. Dude, I've never been gas this car. Exposing celebrity scandals and covering major news events. Hey, Lindsay, how'd you feel? Capturing the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. State-of-the-art technology enables us to push pictures and videos to our clients in seconds. More than 3,000 new images and 50 new videos are added every single day to an archive that already boasts more than 4 million images and some of the most memorable celebrity moments of all time. <laughs> All right. Look at that rig. Wow. You like it? That's special. As pioneers of digital technologies, we speak directly to the Twitter generation. So I'm wondering, I'm only going to see the gynecologist. From live feeds of major events to Splash News TV, a packaged video news service that's already been served more than one billion times. Sensational. Thank you. Really? Enjoying it? Yeah, I love it. Splash is simply the biggest entertainment news agency in the world. That's it, finished. Um, okay, so what we do is we supply B2B to all the big guys, everyone from TMZ, CNN, Wall Street Journal, believe it or not. We're the first paparazzi agency to get a picture on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Um, every website pretty much around the world. UK newspapers, just, just pretty much everywhere. And the demand for it is absolutely insatiable, as you probably all know. Um, people just can't get enough of it. And the consumer is what is really driving this whole demand. And there's really four things that we want to talk about today about why this is. One of them is Hollywood. Well, Hollywood is, and I just found out this the other day, Hollywood is actually the third largest export from the US after the defense industry and agriculture. So celebrity really today is the global language. It doesn't really matter where you go around the world. If you go to, and I've done this, if you go to a jungle in Indonesia, I went into this little village in the middle of nowhere, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Predator movie was playing. And you go anywhere you want, there's always going to be a celebrity playing. There's always going to be a celebrity around. And essentially, this is because of the second point. We live in a gossip world. You gossip about your family. You gossip about your friends, about your neighbors. And essentially, people now are consuming celebrities so fast that we're spending more time with celebrity on a day-to-day -day basis, at least you know, the audience that, that enjoys that, than they really are with their friends. Because celebrity permeates every level of your life. They're on movies, they're on TV, they're magazines, they're doing adverts, they're doing voiceover of those adverts, telling you what to buy. They're UN ambassadors. There, even the president of the US was a, obviously Reagan was a, was a celebrity. And so 
they're really like the global language. They are, they are the part of our culture that everyone is familiar with. The third point is that the democratization of, of the media, especially through digital and the web, which allows anybody to consume, anybody to publish, and anybody to use, and that allows, therefore, for photographers to have a pretty much never-ending market. And that is all brought about by the technology. We're getting faster web, we're getting more access to the ability to do that publishing, cheaper camera equipment. Everybody these days can be a photographer. Um, you know, whether we like it or not, that's, that's how it is. The, the camera equipment's there. Everyone can publish. And those are really the four areas. So what Splash is doing is basically trying to meet that demand, which is being driven by the end user rather than the media companies today, and trying to get as much of that content together and get it out to the world that wants to see it. And it's undeniable that that's what the people want to see. The celebrities really have changed the market forever, at least in the entertainment world. In the old days, it used to be that some crusty old editor sitting in his office would decide what picture was going to go on page three, what you were going to see on the news that night, uh, what was going to be in the magazines. And that was really, they were telling us what we were going to read about and what we're going to basically on a day-to-day on -day basis consume. But nowadays, and we've touched on this several times today already, the sheer plethora of social media, websites, um, Xbox, everything, gives people the ability to consume in any way they want. And it's basically the consumer who is dictating what we look at now. And they can talk directly to me or directly to the photographer. And this isn't just about celebrity or entertainment. It's about pretty much anything. And this is important, I think, from the, the future of revenue for the photographic industry, because we're in a, in a very adversarial relationship right now with the media. The media don't want to pay for digital use. They say it's the same as um, a print. We're just adding another way of people to see things. So price points are going down. PPI is going down. But as we grow further and print starts declining more and more, the ad dollars are still there. The ad dollars are switching to digital. But we're not really getting a piece of that. So what this allows us to do in a greater level than just celebrity is if we can talk directly to the people who are, who are driving this in social media and into, into the websites, the advertising dollar is going to follow that. And the new models that we're looking at are how to share that advertising revenue. And I think Craig from Getty touched on this earlier. It's very difficult to protect your copyright on the web these days, but it's not necessarily out of the question to try and share in the revenue that these people are making from it. And if the consumer continues to drive this demand, then the media giants basically get less and less of a say in the whole of this. Now, just to bring a bit of levity to this, because when I was at dinner a couple of nights ago with all the speakers, Prince Harry was the main subject that came up. Um, and I think what, what this shows is the fact that this story about Prince Harry in Vegas um, drove traffic for TMZ, who first broke this story, to absolute hundreds of millions. And the money they made out was huge. But the picture that drove all of this, and this is just sheer titillation for everyone, was this picture. Now, this must be the worst picture that anyone's ever seen. It's a cell phone picture taken by a drunken party goer at a hotel room in the MGM, someone that Harry had just gone down to the bar and picked up and said, hey, come back to my house. He sold it to TMZ. TMZ gave it to us. It went around the world, and for the month of August, it was probably the highest selling celebrity picture, probably close to all time. And it, it, it started a debate that went around the world multiple times. And the sheer power of a picture that no one in this room, I'm sure, would ever be proud of even saying they took, probably from, not just from being there, but also the quality of the picture. And this is important because this is what's driving the entertainment news today. It's this kind of picture. It's never going to replace the kind of pictures that real photographers take, but it's this, it's, if you have a picture of an event, and it's first, and it's fast, and you get it out to the consumer, to the sites, or to the media, it's this kind of thing that's driving entertainment media right now. And we can see this directly from the consumer. We're not talking about 
you know, making it up, or we're not talking about a bunch of photographers who are taking pictures of celebrities and saying, you should use this picture. Entertainment is now firmly news. Britney Spears' meltdown was on more TV stations in LA, where I'm from, um, than a war was, or you know, the breaking news in, in, in the Middle East, or a natural disaster. They were talking about these people. And in 2011, out of the top 10 searched items on Yahoo, seven of them, I think it is, were celebrities. And that really brings it home to everyone, I think, about how the consumer is changing, how popular culture is changing the way we see things. Even the other two of the other um, 10, one was, 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 well, you know who he is, and Casey Anthony, of course. And these people became celebrities for doing other things. It was Andy Warhol that said, in the future, everybody will get their 15 minutes of fame. And essentially, that's what's happening. News used to be about issues. It used to be about what affected us. It's now firmly about people, which I think makes sense. We're all people. We form the news. But the, the focus has moved away from the issues of the day to what is that person doing. Now, from a photographic point of view, what is fueling this? And without doubt, it's the ability to take that picture, get it to whatever agency that you're putting it through, and they're getting it out to as many places as possible across the web. The customers are buying it, we're tracking the usage, and then the money is flowing back, and it will go to the photographer. With today's technology in the news business, we can do camera to cut to back to me in eight seconds, and I can get it out to a website in China in five minutes. Of course, it still takes a photographer about a year and a half to get paid, but that's, that's the one thing that's probably never going to change. And a little example of this is this is a picture of Jennifer Love Hewitt in LA. <clears throat> and using the streaming technology that grabs the picture straight from the camera, we took the picture. The picture moved over to the back end editing system. And it went out around the world and was published. And this is all happening in a space of just a few minutes. And then, although it's difficult for you to tell, this was still being shot by the time the picture of her was appearing in websites all around the world. And this is actually a slightly different picture to the one that we just showed a minute ago. But all those photographers didn't make any money that day because the technology allowed the photographer who had that technology to get every single website around the world with that picture before anyone else had even gone home to, change, to get their pictures out. And that's really how technology is changing the world for us. And very much so, of course, also for the consumer, because I live in LA where obviously all the celebrities live. We're lucky enough to have some of the best weather and the perfect light. So it doesn't really matter from a point of view of breaking entertainment news, what kind of camera you've got. Because if you get the shot and you can move it quickly, then that's really the way you're going to make money. And like I said, it's never going to replace a big exclusive. I was having you know, dinner with Michael Mullen showing his, his shark pictures, and amazing pictures. It's never going to replace that kind of, of photography. But it's really about speed, first, faster market. And that's what defines the breaking news entertainment model that we're all in today. As um, Alan mentioned, Corbis bought us last year, which some people thought was a strange move. It's a Bill Gates company. Corbis is known, venerated, for its very high-end archive, its commercial business. It's into music licensing, historical, creative, fine art, motion, documentaries. And they went ahead and bought, essentially, a paparazzi agency. Now, this is interesting because it tells us that the, even the big media companies are realizing the fastest growing part of this whole business is exactly this. And it's not so much because People Magazine are wanting pictures. It's because, at the moment, we believe there's probably about 150 million blogs out there, all of, of which are using celebrity pictures right now. Now, very few of them are paying for it. And this is important because, as I was mentioning earlier, about the ad revenue models that we're looking at. If there's a way to monetize, and this, this counts across all kinds of, of uh, material, not just celebrity. But if there's a way of sharing in the advertising revenue and working with 
big publishers or people who control these kind of sites, that's really the way that photographers are going to keep their money up. Because the content licensing model is dying. I don't, I don't know how long it's going to be around, but it's, it's not going to be around for a long time. Now, Splash News. So there's about 5,000 freelance photographers that we have around the world. A lot of them are just like sleeper cells. You know, we've got, we got the Dalai Lama's personal photographer. We've got <coughs> the Pope's personal photographer. And they send pictures when celebrities go to visit. So they don't, they're not always active the whole time. Most of the stuff happens in the US, UK, parts of Europe, and all the holiday areas. But essentially, there's 5,000. We're sending out 5,000 images a day. Now, apparently, that's more than Reuters are generally sending out, but that's also because they actually edit much better than I do. Um, we're selling now in about 65 countries. And more importantly, is we're turning a lot of these stills into video content. Uh, small bites of packaged video which is going out across the web, going onto MSN, Yahoo, Google, all these places, breaking news of celebrity. And most of it is, is turning stills into video. And this is important because it's creating a whole new revenue stream again. And it is based upon the advertising model. You put the content into a video player. The video player is basically given away for free, which is a horrible word I know. And then you're aggregating all of the ad revenue back from, if you can get it on, 40 or 50 sites that are generating 10 million um, uniques, then the advertising dollars are all coming back to the central server and is playing around your content. And that's the money that we're sharing with the photographers. And this model is the fastest growing part of our business right now. There's video platforms like uh, fivemin.com or just using the YouTube um, video uh, player. It's all about making that money work for you. Uh, I just wanted to end here, really, with a selection of pictures that are quite fun, but shows, if you're reading the words that are screaming by, there's a lot of words in here that, oh, I always love ending on that one. Um, vulnerability, Mel Gibson. I mean, OK, some people might think, well, it's a bit sad, but at the end of the day, he was a guy who built his reputation on the, me on the public loving him. And this brings home a very important point to, to me, is that Generally, in the old days, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, Hollywood studios ruled the, the celebrity. They used to make up stories and send them around. And there were, in the 50s, there were magazines in Hollywood, for LA Confidential, where the studios would plant stories. Or they'd plant you know, vodka bottles under, under celebrities' beds and pretend they're alcoholics. And that would be their way of driving people to the cinema. Because that's essentially what it's about. It's about putting bums on seats. And the public today doesn't get fooled by that anymore. The public today thinks, if I'm paying $10 to go and see Mel Gibson in a movie, they believe in a way that they've got their own shares in him. And they think they need, or they think they have the right, and they probably do have the right, to find out if his public persona is the same as a private persona. Now, of course, we can open up the conversation to the right to privacy, the right of public interest, and all that kind of stuff. And we can do that, and they're all fair questions. But essentially, today, what we're faced with is the consumer and there's literally billions of them, are telling the media what they want to see and read. And this is driving such an insatiable desire for celebrity to gossip and through pop culture that celebrity today is really changing the very nature of how breaking news is consumed, is produced, and is sold. Thank you. Gary, ballpark figure, an image like a Prince Harry image. What does the photographer get out of that? Well, I mean, a picture like that will, will gross over half a million dollars. And, and the photographer and the photo, would take well, what In our world, we're much better than getting those guys. We'll pay 50 to 60 percent. Wow. So that's, that's Actually, real one money. thing at Corbis that they're trying to do is, is joking aside, is that we're trying to keep the price, the, the money the photographer makes up. We're not, I don't believe in driving it down as far as possible for margins. I mean, I know that's really how businesses run. But if we don't do that, and we're always bidding hit already with price PPIs that are just screaming down. And under digital, we're going from something that would sell to People Magazine, say $500. On digital, that picture is now worth $5. $5. And it's hard enough making 50% of that. But imagine if it gets worse. And this is why I'm trying to hit home this idea of new revenue streams, advertising revenue. Um, 
Everyone here is sort of capable, you know, we're, we're in Tribeca and there's a lot of celebrities who live in this, this neighborhood. Uh, I, one of my questions would be uh, uh, whether you're concerned about veracity, because I hear stories about celebrities kind of negotiating with photographers. Uh, don't take a photo of me now, I'll, I'll give you one later. Are you concerned at all? Do you see yourself as news or as entertainment? And so does the veracity component worry you at all? Well, to be honest with you, we I see ourselves as part of the Hollywood PR machine. We, really the sort of the, the evil stepchild that no one wanted to invite to the Christmas party, but they know we have to be there, so we sit in the corner and they use us when they want us. But essentially, we're the easiest way of Hollywood to get the personalities they want in front of the widest audience as fast as possible. And so it is actually quite a big part of the business now. It's kind of called uh, fake paparazzi, if you like. Celebrities do work with photographers to make sure they can control the image. In a classic case, is, and I won't mention who, but a picture of a young actress smoking on the beach while she was um, working for Disney. And so she saw the photographer and said, you can't have a picture of me smoking. So this she arranged to do a cartwheel in a bikini along the beach. And the photographer shot that and saw those pictures. She controlled the image. The public got what they wanted. The media got what they wanted. But it is, I mean, celebrities realize and they can't control. No one can really control what's, how the content gets out anymore. So you want to try and control it from the original source if you can, and that benefits the photographer and it benefits the celebrity. When you started 20 years ago, and, and you know, that was the 90s, so I was, I was around, um, there was an A list, and I feel like there was a B list. And now I'm not sure what list we're on, but it's getting pretty far down you the alphabet. <laughs> Just saying, kind of general, <laughs> generally speaking. Well, so do you think celebrity is going is, is gonna to jump the shark at some point, and it's not going to be, you know, like everybody who has 15 minutes on a YouTube video is all of a sudden famous and, and it diffuses the demand? Well, no, I think the demand's getting bigger, but instead the A-list, like Brad Pitt and Angie Jolie, they're always going to be the big sellers for now, but the A-list are kind of filtering out of the equation. And it's really the B and the C list, guys. The reality stars at the moment, if you get a picture of a reality star, they're going to sell around the world for a much lower price point, but the volume game is there. Um, and it's really the TV stars and the reality guys. And we spend a lot of our time actually talking to web, up and coming web stars because, all right, so People Magazine doesn't want to run it, but the 150 million blogs I was telling about do. And if they all pay a dollar each, then I'm retiring tomorrow. Uh, and finally, is there any subject that's off limits, in your opinion, as a paparazzi? Well, um, you know, we work within the bounds of the law, and I know there's a lot of debate upon this. There's actually, a First Amendment lawyer once told me that everybody in America has the right to irritate everybody else. There is no privacy law here. As long as you shoot in public, you can't shoot through windows. You can't. There's actually laws about not shooting through windows using telephoto lenses. You can go over um, weddings and things like that with helicopters. Fox do it, all the big TV guys do it. And in fact, one of the interesting things was when Monica Lewinsky was crashed into by a photographer when she was in the middle of a chase. It was actually an AP guy who hit her. So, you know, this, is, this isn't so much the realm of the paparazzi anymore. It's the realm of celebrity is breaking news. And if you're going to have 100 photographers in a, a natural disaster scene or a war scene, you're going to have 100 photographers at a celebrity scene. And it, it's a question of personal taste about where you see that boundary. But there are laws that stop you doing things. You know, if you're going to speed and chase someone, then you're going to get busted. Um, but within the realms of the law, pretty much if there's, if there's no privacy law, then it's fair game. In France, there's a strong privacy law. In Germany, there's a strong privacy law. But thankfully for me in the US, there isn't. Gary Morgan. Thank you, sir. Thank you.